takot. Pangamba, bigati, iyan ang mga namumutawi. Sa mga pusong naliligaw, mga katawang di makagalaw, sapagkat kinakain sila ng mundong matakaw. Ano nga bang mga dahilan sa mga nangyayari sa kapaligiran nakakalito kung anong dapat na hakbang ko? Ano nga ba talagang halaga ko? Ako? 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 Dito sa pansamantalang mundo. Bawat pagsubok na dumadaan, alam natin na masusolusyonan. Bagkos ang Diyos ang sentro, sentro ng ating buhay. Siya lamang ang totoo, siya ang magbibigay kulay at magpapalasak ng ating tagumpay. Pagpupuri, pagpapasalamat, naway hindi makaligtaan, pagkat ito'y karapat dapat sa Diyos na makapangyarihan. Noon at ngayon, siya'y patuloy na naging tapat. Ako, at ikaw, ay mga tunay na kristyano. Gaano man kahirap ang bawat sitwasyon, alam ko na hindi ka basta bibigaw. Hindi ka basta sumusuko at ikaw ay patuloy na sasamba sa Diyos na iisa. Mananali, magkikiwala at naniniwala upang kapag gumalaw ang lupa, hindi ka basta basta matutumba sapagkat ikaw, ako, tayo ay may pundasyon na hindi magigiba. That was a powerful declaration presented by our youth and YA. And yes, church, we continue to believe that we belong to a kingdom that is unshakable. Amen. So, uh, good morning, everyone. I'll be si Candice. For those of you who don't know me, I'll be your host for today. And here with me, Cyrene. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, so, champions. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you co-hosting with me today. Thank you. Yes, Church, as we continue our celebration today, we want to greet everyone a happy anniversary. And talaga naman, Ate Candice, no? It has been a powerful month for everyone. We were celebrating God's faithfulness to this church. Yes, so please, for our month-long celebration, Church, we believe that you've been receiving something. Amen. So, uh, why don't we take time to uh, head on to the comment section, tell us what, you, what God has been speaking to you, what you've been receiving. Uh, let us encourage one another. Diba? There is a power in our testimony. Amen. Right? So, as you're typing down, we want to welcome everyone who's tuning in right now, our Champion Life Philippines family and the other families from Canada. Hello everyone! Thank you for joining us today. And if this is your first time watching us, please let us know by commenting below. And we have leaders who are ready to connect with you. And if you need prayers, we can pray for you. Yes, please. Uh, like, comment, share. Let's share this stream to others. And uh, let us reach as many people as we can because we believe that the Word of God has the power to transform people Amen. and change lives. Amen? Amen. At this yes. So, to complete our uh, speakers of the month, uh, I want to introduce to you our speaker for today. She's one of my mentors, my tita, Pastor Josephine Lopez from Champion Life Center, London. Woo! Woo! London! Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! <laughs> And it, it may be the, the end of our uh, month of anniversary, but this is a, we're just starting church, you know. So, Pastor Josephine will share with us today what it means to be a well-built person in character and in what we do. Because I believe at this point, this is a very timely, uh, timely word for us. Because we need alignment. Yes. So, 
We hope, Church, you're as excited as we are excited. Yes, ako naman, syempre. I'm excited. <laughs> Amen. So let us uh, set aside any distraction. Let us focus our eyes on Jesus. Church, let us worship. Good morning, Church. Welcome to our online worship celebration. Again, today is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so uh, we are still in our uh, month-long anniversary, guys. And um, the Lord is so faithful for the eight years of existence ng Champion Life Center Philippines. You know, and before we start to worship God, let me just read to you this passage from Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. It says in here, For He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness, and transferred us into the kingdom of His dear Son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. You see, church, this is what makes the gospel good, that there is a perfect God who loved me, who purchased me, now from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And for that reason, marapat lang na dapat natin papurihan, pasalamatan ang Panginoon. So before we worship God, let me just encourage you that to put uh, to set aside any uh, thing that would distract you and let's just give the Lord the time and worship that he deserves okay let's clap our hands Set free, set free, sin has no power over. 
your glory fall as you respond to us. Spirit rain, flood into our thirsty hearts again.
thank you for your sweet, sweet presence, Lord God, that is always present, Lord God. We thank you, God, that you are indeed so, so powerful, Lord God, and mighty, Lord, that you are not limited, Lord God, Panginoon, sa building na ito, Lord God. But even, Lord, those who are watching at home, Father, I know, Lord God, that they felt your presence, Father. So I thank you, God, for all the good things, Panginoon, ipinagkalo mo sa amin, Panginoon. Thank you for the life, Lord. Thank you, God, um, for the strength every day, Lord God, for the chance, Father, to continue to serve you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that whatever is hindering us, Lord, from truly, Lord, um, experiencing you, Lord God, from releasing our all to you, Lord God, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. For in the name of Jesus, there is power. And so, church, let's just claim this. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let there be breakthrough financially, physically, and even spiritually. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you love us so much, Panginoon, that your love has no end, Lord God, for us. And there's no sin, Father, that you cannot forgive, Father. Maraming salamat, God. Muli, again, as we hear about your word, Lord, I pray that you would just bless your speaker, Lord. Use her, Lord God, truly, Lord God, to be a channel of blessing, Lord God. And even those, Lord God, sa mga karinig ng salita mo, Lord God, I pray that it will bring transformation, Lord God, in their lives, Lord God, at ma-demonstrate nila ito, Panginoon, as they reflect you. Again, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this celebration. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. And um, I pray that you would just uh, uh, give us that uh, smooth sailing, Lord God as the celebration goes on. We love you. We worship you. We give to you the highest praise. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Blessings to all our CLC family in the Philippines. Happy 8th year anniversary to all of you. Wow, it's been eight years of God's faithfulness and goodness manifested in your lives. Eight years and going strong and unshakable. Amen? Glory to God. Well, what a privilege it is, and I'm humbled to be bringing the Word of God to all of us today. Last time I spoke um, uh, to all of you was in person last year when we were on vacation, and we had such an amazing time with all of you, and we do miss you. And I know one day when uh, we're all allowed to uh, travel again, we will see you again, hopefully, in a year or two. Praise God. Let us pray. Amen. Although we are online right now, but I'm excited to still engage with all of you. So wherever you are watching from, just type and comment below uh, where you are joining us from. And just greet everyone by saying, so blessed to be with all of you today. Amen. What a blessing it is to gather together. And, um, you know, uh, being the last one to speak um, is also a bit of a pressure following the great uh, man and woman of CLC family. But praise God because we are representing the same God and bringing the same word to all of you. Amen. Well, I know that this whole month of November has been amazing and, um, and uh, jam-packed with uh, powerful messages from our pastors from the different satellites. And of course, the theme that we have is unshakable. Indeed, we are unshakable in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the title of uh, my message today that we will be um, discussing is Well Built. Well built, and it is the our main um, scripture today is found in Luke six forty six to forty nine. It says, "Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like." 
They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we can come together as a family, um, regardless of the distance, oh God, and still spend time and learn from your word. We thank you for giving us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to comprehend your word this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you that you will be the one to illuminate this word, this information that we're going to receive today, that it will bring transformation in our lives and will be able to demonstrate it to others. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for anointing all of us, anointing our ears, anointing our hearts, anointing our minds to be focused on you today. And we thank you, oh God, that as we study your word, that, that we will live it out and you will help us to apply this in our daily life. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praises as we study your word today. In the most powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, sino po sa atin ang nahirapan to stay fit or well-built physically during this pandemic? Mas lalo na po at the beginning of the lockdown. It was so hard. We were so limited. And, you know, we were just sitting at home. I was so used to going to work. Um, taking the bus, you know, uh, two buses, so I will have to transfer, so I would be walking, you know, back and forth, and it was good, and I got used to that, and climbing the stairs and all that, and all of a sudden, you know, um, since March, we've been working from home, so sa bahay, I'm just sitting in front of the computer, and I would just get up if I need to go to the washroom or cook, that's about it, or go upstairs, that would be my stairs, and that would be my exercise, it was, it was hard to stay active. And even during the pandemic, I know a lot of people and a lot of Christians had a hard time to stay active, not just physically, but even spiritually. People got so uh, got complacent and comfortable of just being at home and not as active as they used to be. But you know what? What really blessed me so much is this. Not CLC Philippines. My goodness. You know, I've seen postings and all. You remained active and did not let the pandemic paralyze you. Especially there in the Philippines when they say lockdown, it's lockdown. Only one person can go out and the rest should be staying home. You know, and you remained active. Missions. You were able to minister to people and despite the pandemic and bless them and pray, and pray for them. That is, you know, amazing and glory to God. And you, you remain active in live groups, even though it was online, but you were faithfully connecting with the people and just blessing one another, encouraging one another. And of course, during online worship celebration, wow, what an amazing team we have in the Philippines. What an amazing family we have there. What an encouragement to a lot of people. And in the midst of all that, you know, you remain active, you remain faithful in the Lord. The, one of the greatest result or fruit of that and the blessing is that God added more people to the family. Amen? That is, isn't that wonderful? Let's, you know, let's just give praise to God and give him glory because that's what happened. When we remain active, when we put God first, he is the one who will take care of the rest. And we praise God because he's the one who adds people. He's the one who brings people to himself. So we praise God for the many lives and for those that are, you know, joining even our CLC um, family in the Philippines. Praise God. Well, the question for all of us today is this. Are we well built? And how do we stay well built? But first, we would like to establish um, that in order to be well built, we have to know where we should be built on. Where you are built on determines you're built. Are you strong or are you weak? Are you well built or poorly built? Are you unshakable or shakable? Amen? 
Our passage clearly states this morning from um, Luke that we should be built on the rock of our salvation, and that is Jesus Christ, and not on anyone else and not on anything else. With everything that we're going through in this life, with this pandemic, you know, kind of lingering, and this virus is there, it's like, you know, a flu now that's, it's, it's pretty much there to stay. But how are we going to stay well built in the midst of, you know, of a pandemic? And that is to stay connected and to be built on our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very obvious that what God is looking for here here in this passage is not anything else but our obedience. Because when he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. Jesus was, you know, saying, I will show you. If you come to me, remember Jesus when he says, uh, as for everyone who comes to me, Jesus is not selective. Okay? Anyone can come to Jesus, regardless of who you are, the color of your skin, or your background, we can come to Jesus. So he said, as for everyone who comes to me, he is not selective. You can come to him and hears my words. He is, hears his words. Okay, we got to hear his word, his instructions. And it did not enter and says, and puts them into practice. So the key there is puts them into practice. And he went to say, he went on to say, I will show you what they are like. You know, they are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. And here's the result. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it. It's unshakable it, 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 because it was well built. And that is what we desire. And that's, you know, um, what we're studying today. It is very obvious that God is looking for a obedience from his people because they were saying he was saying why do you call me lord lord you know what lord means you know it's like uh, if we if we look at that if he is our lord then we are submitted to him what he says goes and so why do you call me lord lord but yet you do not do what i say when i read that i said god what do you mean by this and then i went back to earlier passages or earlier verses of, of this Luke 6, I, you know, I just want to touch on some of them, and starting uh, Luke uh, 6, 27, where it says, but to you who are listening, okay, to those that are listening to Jesus, he said to them, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to the other, Turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, you know, do not withhold your shirt from them. And then he, he kept on, say, you know, going, give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And then he goes on again in verse uh, 32. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you even sinners do that okay and if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment what credit is that to you even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full but Jesus says but love your enemies do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. I, I was just so blessed when I was reading this that Jesus is, is giving us his example, giving us who he is that we should be following um, and doing exactly what he says. He says, you know, Jesus, the Most High, um, he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. I mean, this is so hard for a lot of people. And that's why in Jesus said, you call me Lord, Lord, you profess and you tell me that I am your Lord, but you do not do what I say. And it, because, it, you know, if you think about it, it's hard. But see, that's why we got to get, you know, um, we have to be laid on the right from there. We have to be laid on Jesus. We have to be um, connected to Jesus. We have to, it says, dug down deep and laid a foundation 
and rock laid the foundation on Jesus. Be why? Because yes, it's hard. Apart from the Lord, it's hard to do all these things. Because only in Him and through Him, we can ever love the ungrateful and be kind to the ungrateful and be kind to the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. And that is in verse 36. Again, Jesus was telling them, those that are listening, look, do this. Love your enemies. Do not judge. And 37, do not judge and you will not be judged. And then in 38, it says, give and it will be given to you. This is where we get that verse. Of, you know, one of our favorite verses when uh, it's offering time. Given it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this proud, Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. And this is our desire and what we what we're aiming for. That you know. As the Lord trains us, as we are built in the Lord Jesus Christ, as we lay that foundation on Jesus, that, you know, um, yes, we are not going to be above our teacher, but, you know, the result is going to be everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. And then it goes on to say, I will let you read that on, you know, in your own time. In verse 41, why do you uh, look at the speck um, of uh, sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? I know Pastor Happy uh, kind of touched on this as well. And so again, and then in verses uh, 43 on, it's talking about a tree and its fruit that you will know a tree by its fruit. And so, and then it goes to 46, which is our verse, and Jesus was telling, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So again, as we study today, uh, it's so um, evident that God wants our obedience. Obedience, number one, brings blessings. Verse 48 of Luke 6, it says, 48a, they are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid a foundation on rock. You know, I was uh, uh, thinking uh, of this. Are you a man of action or merely an actor? Are you a man of action or a woman of action or merely a man or an actor, okay? So there's a difference. When Jesus say, says that, you know, anyone who comes to me, hears my words and puts them into practice. So here's the thing, a man of action, yes, the, um, the, 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 uh, the first two is the same, who comes, who hears. A man of action and a, an actor will do the same. But the third one is what, you know, uh, uh, makes the difference is the doing. Because an actor uh, just plays the role. It's just an entertainer. You know, but a man of action is the one who acts. It's the one who does what he was told. So in this uh, morning, in our first point, obedience brings blessing. A man of action digs and makes it deeper. When I was reading this passage where it says, um, who dug down deep and laid a foundation. It's, it's a continuous um, digging. It's not just a one-time work, one-time digging, and that's it. No, it, you know, it says digs and makes it deeper. So you keep on digging. This calls for labor, brings out the toil. So, you know, um, if, if you want to, to harvest well, in, in your uh, farm, you toil for it, you work hard for it. You keep on working. And in this passage, is, this one is digs and makes it deeper. To dig takes effort, sacrifices, and in intentionality. This is not a momentary act of faith, but this involves a process. Keep digging deep. Keep digging deep until, okay, you keep digging deep. Remember, we are digging deep and, and, and lay the foundation on the rock. 
The more we dig, the more we dig into Jesus, the more we become like him. That's why we can do what he says, he, you know, what he says uh, to do. Because the more our foundation is laid on the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we become like him. We will never be above him or greater than our teacher. But the more we are trained, we become like our teacher. So until, you know, keep digging until you cannot see any Anything around you but what is above you you know what's interesting if you are digging if you watch you know people that are digging or laying foundation or building buildings and all that and if you're doing it manually it takes a lot of work and that this is this is a manual work okay we don't use like you know crane and all that this is a manual because this is your personal um, obedience to God this is your personal growth and maturity to God this is a call for individual God is saying you call me Lord Lord and yet we do not do what I say. Anyone who comes to me, hears my word, puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. And so this one is a keep digging deep. You don't stop. The moment you receive Jesus Christ, the moment you receive the word, you keep digging deep until you cannot see anything around you but what is above you. You know when you're digging, you keep digging deep and then the, the deeper you get, it, all you see is just, you know, um, probably the soil around you. And that's what our aim is, that until you cannot see anything around you, nothing to distract you, nothing to, you know, to, that, that you can be distracted and take your, your, your focus from, from the Lord. And keep digging deep until you cannot see anything around you, but what and who is above you? Amen? What and who is above you? Keep digging deep until all other voices are quiet down except who is above you. You know when you are in the hole? It's hard to hear. You cannot hear the people from, you know, probably on that side or the other side. But what you can hear or who you can hear is the one, the person above you. So keep digging deep until all other voices are quiet down except who is above you. Keep digging, digging uh, deep until your faith is stronger than the fear and doubt around you. Keep digging deep until your spirit is stronger than your flesh. Because here on earth, you know, the, the, uh, our, our flesh is so much still there. It's existing, existing right now, you know. And so um, love is stronger than hate. And this is what, keep digging deep until your spirit is stronger than your flesh. That love will be stronger than hate. Love will be stronger than resentment. Love will be stronger than anger and bitterness. And that's why Jesus said, those that are listening, love. Right? Even your enemies, love them. Keep digging deep until Jesus comes and takes us to be with him forever. It's, it's we're not going to stop. Keep digging deep. Amen. When you are digging deep into Jesus, you are digging deep into his character. You are digging deep into who he is. Isn't that amazing? That when we keep and we lay our foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ, and that means doing, you know, um, we end up doing what he says uh, in his word. We could never uh, keep digging if we don't listen and if we don't do what we are told by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is love, and so therefore, we love. We keep digging deep into the Lord, lay the foundation on the rock the rock of our salvation, and that is Jesus Christ. And don't stop digging deep. Our action never stops. We keep coming to the Lord. We keep hearing and hearing his word. We keep obeying his word. Only when we are rooted and built up in Christ can we be unshakable in this very shaking world. Colossians 2, 6, it says, So then, just as you receive Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up on Him. It's strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with, thanks, uh, with thankfulness. Praise the Lord. Why? Because in verse 48, letter B of Luke 6, it says, When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it, because it was well built.
Glory to God, because it was well built in Jesus. Our foundation is on the Lord Jesus. We are rooted and built up in him. Strengthen, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. You know, overflowing with thankfulness. I know it's so hard to be thankful right now uh, in the midst of pandemic and everything that's happening in the Philippines, especially during this season with typhoons and all that. You know what? Once we are, you know, it's a continue. It's Colossians 2, 6. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives. Continue. Keep digging. Continue to live your lives in him. Rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Overflowing with thankfulness. Not because of all the things, but because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Amen. Amen. And God, who is alive, a powerful, mighty, merciful, gracious, faithful, and good, will never leave us nor forsake us. Glory to God. It's not a matter of if the flood, the storm, the shaking is coming. It's when. They are part of our lives. You know, it's not all if. No, they will come. And sometimes, you know, if we are not ready, it, it will surprise us. And that's why we got to keep digging, digging deep in the Lord Jesus Christ. In this world, you will have troubles, Jesus said, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Jesus said, in this world, yes, we will have trouble. It's, a, it's a, you know, our troubles to face, but he encouraged us to take heart to be founded in him, for only in him, our sure foundation, will we be able to stand against the storm, for he is the one who overcome or overcame the world. Amen? Are we well built in him? If we are, storms will not shake us. Amen? For Jesus has overcome it. And we just have to keep digging and laying the foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the rock. Amen? And we are unshakable. Now, on the other hand, as we continue in that um, uh, passage, our main scripture today, number two, uh, you know, the first one is obedience brings blessing, and disobedience brings destruction. Number two, disobedience brings destruction. Verse 49, but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. So, you know, disobedience brings destruction. When we don't do what Jesus said, it will bring destructions into our lives. It's like children. We know that for those that have children, for those that are parents uh, just like me, you know, uh, I remember Jonah, and I know I've told this uh, story to them, and he would just laugh now, but it's true. When Jonah was little, I was cleaning upstairs, and he was about probably three or four years old, and he was in the family room playing. All of a sudden, the lights went off. It's like, what happened? We, you know, the power was gone. And then I heard something. It's like, you know, um, a, a shortage of, of power, electricity. So I went in the uh, family room and I, I said to him, what happened? And he was kind of, you know, holding his hand and hiding it. I said, what did you do? <laughs> and he knows not to play with, you know, um, electrical sockets, you, you know, where you plug everything. And sure enough, I saw the key. He put the key in that socket, and then it hurt him. And from there on, he learned his lesson. But see, it's it, 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 same thing with, with, with us. When we disobey, it brings destruction to us. It, you, you might not see it right away, but you know what? God's word never lies, and he never lies. And it's, it's, it's just right that when there's obedience, there is that result because of the obedience. But when there's disobedience, there's also a result. When we put our faith in God, there is a result. When we don't, there is also a result. When, you know, when, when Jesus loved people, 
Why? Because he loved them. And there's a result. Why did Jesus come? He loved us so much. There is a result, our salvation. And, and you know, and we are not um, uh, sent for destruction and for, for the, the penalty of sin. He saved us because of his obedience to the Father. And so again, disobedience brings destruction. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Another example by the, the man uh, named King Saul. King Saul disobeyed the word of God in 1 Samuel 15:22. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of, of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. King Saul disobeyed the word of God, and because he rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected King Saul as a king. And that's why, you know, David came along. So to obey, and that's what Samuel said, to obey is better than sacrifice. We can be sacrificing so many things in our lives, but without obedience, we are laboring for nothing and we will just be exhausted. We may be able to sacrifice the best offering to the Lord, but are we obeying him on how to give? Are we giving with a cheerful heart or grudgingly? Bibigay na, you know, bibigay na naman, right? Ito na naman, bibigay na naman. Magre-remind na naman yung LG ko. Pandemic na nga eh, pero sige. Baka ma-question ako ng LG ko kung bakit hindi ako nagbibigay. You know, we may be sacrificing that way, but the, the heart is what God is looking at. And so, you know, we can be sacrificing that, and yet our heart is not right with God. Remember, God sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ, not partially, but as a whole. Jesus gave his whole life and everything about him to us, not just some of who he is, but all of him. Obedience, God is looking for, is a full obedience and not partial or half half-hearted obedience. Partial obedience is still disobedience. Saul was given a very specific, if you read that story, why Samuel said that to Saul, Saul was given a very specific instruction by the Lord. He obeyed, he still went, he did it, he went and obeyed God, but did not do exactly what God told him to do. And because of that, God rejected him as king. You see, it's not just the doing, it's not just doing the right thing, but it is doing the right thing right. Okay, we got to do it right as well. Yes, we're doing it right. We're doing what is right, but we got to do it right. We got to have the right attitude. We got to have the right heart in doing it. Lord, you know, I can give you my life but not my pocket. I can give you my heart, Lord, but not my pocket. Lord, I can serve you right now, but not all the days of my life. Hirap yata niyan, Lord, napakalaking commitment. Lord, pwede ba pag wala ng pandemic, tsaka ako mag-serve sa'yo? Right? Joshua made a very bold statement in Joshua 24, 15. He said to the people of Israel, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I know that's one of our favorite verses, but that's it really, you know, again, doing the right thing right. Kaya kaya ba natin na sabihin din yan at kaya ba natin gawin? Na kahit na anong mangyari, Lord, at kahit na marami pagsubok at gano'ng mang kalayo ang gawain na para sa Panginoon that we can boldly and confidently and joyfully say, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Praise God. See, obedience is better than sacrifice. I will tell you, Jesus says, I will tell you, 
um, the one who comes to me, who hears my words and puts them into practice. He's like a man who built his house, you know, who dug deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the storm comes and when the torrent comes, that, you know, um, house will never be shaken because it is well built. God is looking for men and women who will take his words seriously and not lightly. It's time to dig and keep digging deep. Are you a man or a woman of action or merely an actor? The difference between them, as I said earlier, it's not the coming nor the hearing. A lot of people come, a lot of people hear, but not a lot of people will do. And so uh, this morning, as we are being encouraged and also challenged by the word of God, let us remember whether we are a man of action or merely an actor, there will be results either way. The question is, which results would we want to see and experience in our lives? Jesus, since he came here on earth to the day he went back to heaven to be with the Father, all he did was to obey the Father, to do the will of the Father. And as a result of his obedience to this day, many people are being saved from the penalty of sin through him. Through one man's disobedience, according to Romans 5, through one man's disobedience, sin entered the world, and sin brought death to everyone. But because of one other person's, that is Jesus, his obedience to the Father, wonderful grace, and his gift of forgiveness, many will be made righteous. Wow. If there is one person that we can look up to and follow and imitate and be our model, let us not look anywhere else. Jesus is here, and he is the one challenging all of us today. You call me Lord, Lord, and yet you do not do what I say. And then in earlier verses of that, it shows, you know, it's about a relationship here on earth as well with everyone. And then a pastor happy to touch on unity and how important it is. And unity in the body of Christ, unity uh, even within our own family, it requires relation. It requires the other person, right? And so this morning, let us be encouraged and let us be challenged as well to keep digging, you know, to keep laying the foundation on the rock, on Jesus Christ, so that we will, we, we will be well built. That no matter what the storm that will come our way, we will not be shaken. We will be unshakable. Amen. But be encouraged. I know sometimes like, oh, what happened? But you know what? If you assess and you look at your life from the day you received Jesus Christ to where you are now, and you say, wow, yes, God, you have been so good, and I can thank you, just like what we read earlier, that, you know, we are so thankful because God did his amazing work in our lives. The changes that happen in us is not done by anyone else but by Jesus through our obedience to his word. Amen. And so let us keep serving the Lord. Let us keep pursuing God. So this morning, let us remember that Jesus is inviting all of us to come. Anyone can come to him and hear his words and put them into practice. Obedience brings blessing. Disobedience brings destruction. And God and Jesus himself is saying, you know, I will show you if you come to me, if you hear my voice, if you hear my words and put them into practice, this is who you are. You're the one who's building a house, who dug down deep and laid a foundation on rock. And when the torrent comes, that you know, that house will not be shaken because it is well built. I hope that that bless you this morning. And remember, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You know, in spite of everything that's happening, we may be, uh, you know, going through the... Uh, doubting or whatever, but remember that in him, in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. Amen? And so for those that are watching 
That, and it, you know, this is your first time, and probably you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, and you don't even know what what that means and what what it means to have a relationship with God or with the Lord. And and today Jesus is also inviting you to come to come to Him, because He will never, um, you know, deny you. He will never shy you away. He will accept you. He says, "Those everyone who comes." to me and here's my word and puts them into practice so if that is you this morning and you're not sure and you know do i know the lord do i have a relationship with him i would like to invite you to uh, receive jesus into your life because there's no other way to the father but jesus jesus uh, in um, john 14 6 i am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father except through me so if that is you this morning you want to experience how to be well built in your faith and in the lord jesus christ that when you even though there are problems, because they will be there, it, they're every part of our lives. But the difference is that we have foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ, rather than the other one who does not have a foundation. And of course, it's it's uh, the destruction is complete. It will be destroyed. And so let us build our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If that is you, I would like to um, invite you to say this prayer, a very short prayer, and dedicating or even recommitting your life to the Lord. So just follow after me. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. I need you into my life. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Help me from here on to be obedient to your word, that I will, I will be well built, and my, you know the foundation will be in you. So Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me, for forgiving my sin, for redeeming me. And from here on, I pray that you will help me to walk and live out your word every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If that is you, we would like to connect with you. Our MC at the end will tell you instruction and how you can connect with us. Congratulations, we are so happy that you have dedicated your life to the Lord. Well, church family, I know this is the end, but I know I always see you online as well and chat with you. But praise God, I pray that you have been blessed by the message of the Lord today. Let's continue to keep on digging deep, okay? And be obedient to the Lord and then do what he says we should do. Amen? Let us just pray this morning. Father God, we thank you for your word. We dedicate this time to you. We thank you for the people that listen and are listening. Thank you, Jesus, that you will um, continue to speak to us and continue to bring growth and maturity in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering us, anointing us, and enabling us to continue to uh, keep on digging deep and then laying the foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that truly in you we are well built and that we are unshakable. Father, bless your people today. May, may your face shine upon them, Lord God. And we thank you that you will continue to walk with them every step of the way, that no matter what they're facing, oh God, that you are their source and that they are founded in you and that they will not be shaken. So God, we commit to you, everyone. We just thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. We bless you in Jesus' name me pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you, family. Happy 8th anniversary again. Amen. Thank you, Pastora Josephine, for that powerful message. And church, we hope and pray that you've been blessed by the word today. Amen. And church, let us not forget the encouragements of our pastors and what God has spoken to us in this entire month. Amen. Yes, and let us remain united and steadfast in our faith 
as a church for we belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, welcome to the family of God. So please send us a message and connect with us because we have a team that is more than willing to connect yes. with you. Amen. Uh, church, last October, we had our local mission, Mission Compassion, where we're able to reach out and bless families in our communities. Uh, and then through that mission, at this like we were able to uh, harvest souls. No? Praise God. And daming tumanggap souls. talaga naman nakakatuwa uh, that um, more and more people that despite of what's happening, despite of the pandemic, they are receiving uh, Jesus. And, it, and despite of the situation, the kingdom of God is advancing. Amen. That Amen is a good news, that. diba? Yes. Uh, what a testimony to have, you know. That when when we're able to give to God what is rightfully right. His, yes. diba? He's able to respond in such ways uh, beyond what we can imagine. imagine. Yes. So, church, um, we just want to exhort this for our tithes and offering from Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. You know, when we honor God, He also honors the way He honor the way we honor Him. Diba? Pag binigay natin kung ano yung nararapat kay Lord, He sees that. Eh. He yeah. sees our hearts, and and when God sees our hearts, it moves Him. Amen. Right? If we just give God what is rightfully His, He's gonna pour out such blessing more than what we can ever imagine. So as we give church, uh, uh, let us pray. Father, I thank you for, for your people, Lord God, as, as they sow, Lord God, as, as they give, Lord God, what is rightfully yours, God. I thank you for our hearts, Lord, that you see our hearts, Lord God. You yes. see our needs, Lord God. And Lord, as we respond to you in faithfulness, Lord, you are also faithful, Lord God, to uh, to fill in, Lord God, our every single little need, Lord thank God. Thank you, Lord. So thank you, Father, for your faithfulness for us, Lord. And God, uh, we just lift up to you uh, our giving, Lord bless your people financially emotionally spiritually god i speak uh wholeness to organ and just restoration Lord. amen i thank you god for for um i thank you god that there is no lack lord god when we entrust um our resources to you so father i thank you you are our source you are our provider amen. in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. and for our churches announcements and updates please like and follow our social media accounts here on facebook and on youtube at champion life center philippines yes and para sa ating mga young people what's up lp you Woo! can like and follow our facebook page at living proof youth philippines para maging updated kayo sa ating mga online activities yes and also if you need some prayers or counseling please uh, don't be shy to reach us on on the numbers that are showing on your screen we have leaders uh, who is who is more than willing to connect with you pray yes. with you just reach out and church that's it for today once again thank you for joining us today our anniversary month may end today family but greater things are ahead of us at the candies yes so please join us again next month we have a brand new series called faith so church tune in invite friends let's and let's continue, continue to, to spread, spread the, the gospel. gospel church stay safe Stay updated and God, God bless, bless you all. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!